hello everybody welcome to today's webinar my name is bridget i am the social media guru here at realty executives in jersey and today we're going to be talking about digital marketing for real estate professionals now if you have any questions as we go about today's webinar please do pop them into the chat box on the side of your screen there happy to answer any questions you may have but let's get into digital marketing which can feel like taking a dive into the unknown for a lot of of uh, real estate professionals out there but if you don't spend all of your time online yourself, it can be kind of scary to get out there. And I get that, but no, never fear here. Nobody starts at the deep end and nobody has all the answers before they begin. And even better, getting going is probably cheaper and a lot quicker than you actually think it is. And speaking of a budget, there's plenty you can do in the realms of digital marketing without spending a penny. But when it comes to reaching new audiences, that's when a little budget can go a long way. So every part of your digital marketing is a great opportunity to learn something so it's all about starting small testing learning and growing over time and and here in today's webinar we're going to take you through the easy access ways to get started uh, from making the most of the search engines to even uh, buying your first ads online you know all the channels are going to be familiar to you here that we're going to talk about uh, facebook twitter google email uh, even if you have your own website uh, we're going to give you here all the steps that you need to feel confident that you're testing and investigating and investing in the way that's right for you and the growth of your business. Now, what you'll find here uh, in this webinar that has a, a lot to do with what we're going to be talking about um, inbound marketing. Now, the tactics here you can use to attract, convert, uh, and really, you know, get those targeted visitors to your website social and blog you know digital platforms are great for this because we now have more ways more places and more routes to attract people to visit our website where we hope they're going to become loyal clients right we also can be more creative with this kind of marketing and it's not just about what we think of as traditional outbound marketing activity it's it's your website it's your blog it's your social media channels that are at the heart of any digital marketing plan so always keep in mind that you're optimizing for these destinations when planning digital marketing tactics now digital marketing is an umbrella term for all of your online marketing efforts you know businesses leverage digital channels such as google search social media text marketing email and their websites to connect with their current and prospective clients you know from your website to your online assets like digital advertising email marketing online brochures and beyond there's a huge spectrum of tactics to consider and the best digital marketers have a clear picture of how each asset supports their overarching goal now inbound marketing is about using marketing to bring potential clients to you rather than having your marketing efforts fight for their attention sharing is caring and inbound marketing is about creating and sharing content with the world so by creating content specifically designed to appeal to your dream clients inbound attracts qualified perspectives to your business and keeps them coming back for more all the time and in content marketing is um a marketing program that can that centers on creating publishing and distributing content for your target audience and this is usually happens online and the goal of which is to attract new clients and then you've got your your buyers or your seller's journey which is the process of buyers and sellers going through and becoming aware of evaluating and purchasing or selling their home using your services so putting all of these together here creates the big idea uh, of our overarching goal now strategy in spite of being a word favored by shiny suits of the world here really just means thinking about why you're doing something before you do it so starting a digital marketing strategy is as simple as deciding what you want to do how you're going to do it and what you expect to happen and then when and how you're going to measure your success now brand awareness you know let's talk about what do you want here so let's talk about brand awareness first do you want more people to know about your brand and get your services more widely known pretty sure the answer is yes let's talk about lead generation do you want to reach people who've never used you before and bring them into your buyer or seller journey pretty sure the answer is yes let's talk about growth do you want people to who've already used your services to refer you pretty sure the answer is yes and if possible set a specific goal one with metrics attached to it and a time limit 
you know, this kind of growth could include the number of leads from a piece of downloaded content from your website that happens in a month. It could be percentage of old clients referring your business. And it could be a percentage of follower growth on social media. Uh, you know, within two weeks, you've got to understand what you want from these three particular things. Okay, so we're gonna, now we talked about those there. Let's talk about setting the steps now to get this digital marketing strategy going. So first we want to look at the types of goals that you've already set out. You want to pick one to concentrate on and really understand the goal you're trying to hit is, is the first step of the whole plan in place. So you wanna to get to know your audience, right? If you don't understand enough about who you're trying to reach, you're going to struggle struggle with delivering a message that's not relevant or not relevant enough to cut through all of the red tape out there, right? The good news is that you don't have to have client research agency on retainer to be smart about it. You know, we are who we are, the small businesses that we are, the individual agents that we are. So the easiest way to make sure you don't come up with a watery general campaign to make your own buyer personas is functionalized general descriptions of your key client groups. You want to think about who your customers are and group them accordingly. What are the characteristics of each group here? You know, my biggest tip is that you rank them. You know, before you start, be totally clear which of them is the most important to you. Then you want to know exactly your brand. Who is your brand? What kind of character is your brand? Because your brand is your how and your why that clients choose you over others. Yes, you can think of it as your, your, your characteristic, your personality. What are you putting out there? So it's something that's worth clearly defining. You know, what do you stand for? Uh, what are your strong character traits? And how does it translate into your presence from the images you use on your website to the language that you use in your emails? So let's take a quick brand health check. Okay. Who is your customer? You want to get your personas lined up, visualized and ranked, first of all. Use them to help answer questions that you're going to be asking yourself about your brand. What problem do you solve? Now, from your customer's perspective, what challenge are you solving for them? You want to visualize your perceived value. Of course, I always talk about value and benefits. So what are your distinctive benefits? You know, list three to five benefits your clients gets from choosing your services that clients don't get from going somewhere else. And what is your brand promise? You know, this is like, like a pledge. Um, what you always do for your clients, you know, this, this is the other key part of your proposition that separates you from the competition. So take your answers and try to craft a single paragraph that covers them. And it's okay if things merge and overlap because the aim is to end up with this unique message, this unique selling proposition. So and lastly, can you make what you have shorter? You know, what you take and refine what you have. Take your time, review again, and review again until you've distilled your value proposition to one clear line that captures everything you want to say. Short, sweet, and to the point. Okay, now your competitors aren't just those who offer like for like product or service, right? You can think of your competitors in three different ways. Think of them as direct competitors, or those are the brands who offer the same services as you. Think of them as indirect competitors for brands that may offer different services, but compete for the same space as you do. And think of them as comparators. You know, these might have a similar look and feel as a brand to you or other brands that your target clients use frequently as well. You want to know what you're up against and you can learn vicariously from both triumphs and mistakes. You know, get inspired by your competitors' wins and use your differences to highlight what's unique about what you're offering. So how do you go about gathering intel? Well, it's pretty easy, actually. You wanna search for a few key terms related to the industry and note where each brand ranks on the results page. Also, try out your competitors, you know, read their reviews, explore their website, maybe sign up for their newsletter, you know, maybe not necessarily using uh, your, your business email, but, uh, you know, if you've got something else that doesn't exactly say who you are, you know, try out your competitors, see, see what they've got there. Ask your customers, your clients, what they think your rivals do well and what they love about, you know, others in the, the section as well. 
You also want to note when and where you see your competitors' ads. Take a picture, screenshot them. What, what do they have going on? Follow a lot of other brand social channels. Follow them on Instagram, follow them on Twitter, follow them on LinkedIn. And you can also use, um, if you so choose, you can use paid online tools uh, that do analysis on how well your competitor sites do in search rankings and web traffic. But of course, you know, that's after you go through all the free things first. But there are those paid things that you can do as well. Uh, so, but I do think you've got a lot of the free things out there, but it just takes some time going through all these different things. Because then having these brilliant ideas for how you'll drive traffic, build your brand awareness, grow your customer base is just the beginning. It's crucial that you know how you'll track your progress so you can adjust your plan based on what gets the best reaction. You know, there are a lot of different things you can measure, you know, these metrics that you're going to have. Uh, but a benchmark of what a good score is will depend entirely on you and what you're going to be doing. Now, digital marketing can sometimes feel like a guessing game, you know, with so many strategies, channels, topics to choose from. It's becoming increasingly challenging to know which tactics are going to drive the greatest returns. And with limited resources, small businesses don't have the luxury of throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. You know, they don't have the time or the budget to test and learn from every possibility. And really, who really does anyway? So you need a better way of determining what resonates with your target audience and which marketing strategies have the most significant impact. Okay, so the answer here, competitive analysis. Digging into the competitive analysis data makes it possible to uncover strategies used by your competitors and gain an understanding of what, what kind of success is and what kind of success isn't so that you can learn from their experiences. You know, this is gonna enable you to make well-informed business decisions and craft data-driven campaigns that are really going to meet your goals. So understanding your competitive landscape is a key step in growing your business. You know, monitoring the performance of competitors and up and coming players in, your, in the industry here are really going to make it possible to find inspiration and optimize your marketing efforts at every stage of the funnel. Competitive analysis data can help you answer crucial questions, um, you know, like these that you see here up on the screen here. And, and with knowledge from these the questions and the answers, you can attract your target audience, engage visitors more effectively by serving up with the right content and really delight them by meeting their intent for when they're coming to your social channels or your website, whatever it might be. Now, there are types of competitive analysis that will produce different results. So some of the most effective ones um, include uh, strategic group analysis or, or, or some kind of customer mapping as well. But let's start by taking a look at the most important steps for any competitive analysis framework here. So you want to identify competitors you want to analyze. You want to research their competing market strategies. You want to benchmark the results against whatever you, else you've got in the industry and, and highlight new opportunities to meet your goals. So as I mentioned earlier, there are multiple types of competitors that you should be keeping your eyes on and not just those that offer direct comparable products or services and, and to you. You know, it's important to remember that not all of your competitors will be found on the same industry and not all sites in an industry are true competitors. Think of it that too, you know, who in the area is with you, who also in your, your farming area, right? So by analyzing multiple types of competitors, you can evaluate how your business is performing and create a comprehensive list to monitor. So you're not going to miss another opportunity any place. And for your analysis, you can clearly define what types of competitors you'll be looking at, whether direct or indirect. And you can perform separate analyses on different types of competition in order to highlight different information. So. When you've done all of this stuff, you're, the information that you're going to have is truly gold. You're literally digging for gold. And by understanding both the successes and failures of your competitors, you can stop strategizing in the dark and start using real user data to drive decision making. So after you've dug for your gold, you want to take a look in the mirror. Look at your own data. Look at your own data compared to the competition and highlight what's outperforming and where you may need to rethink your own strategy. Dig into the strategies and, and how you can use takeaways to improve on your own tactics as well. You know, set, set reasonable goals for yourself by applying the learnings and optimizing one area of your strategy at a time. Remember though that your analysis does not stop here. Your, the competitors that you identified 
um, will we'll continue to adapt and optimize as you do as well. So it's crucial that you consider to monitor performance on a regular basis. You know, there's always new players popping up all the time. Um, so you want to keep an eye on the data and keep an eye on your competitor list and keep it updated and fresh as well. So now you've got your plan. You know who and what you're going to go after. You know what you're going to measure and you know what you're going to try to achieve. And now it's really time to get going. So the good news here is that it's easy to experiment with different ideas to reach your audience on social media, on search engines, and your own website. You can try different types of formats for content to find the best results. And the great thing about most digital marketing campaigns, you can begin to track reactions soon as they've launched, which means you can work out which campaigns are delivering the best return on investment and which techniques are the most efficient for your brand. Got a couple of them here up on the screen there too. So, but of course, when you're going through, you know, I say return on investment, but it might be something where you're just simply looking at what you're doing on your social media. What kind of posts are performing? What kind of posts are not performing? What kind of posts are getting more reactions than others? Did a video do well rather than just text that you typed? That right there is a simple analysis you can start with right from the beginning. So one of the best ways, ways to reach new clients is to make sure that your website is appearing when your customers are searching for your for answers to problems or they're searching for questions and answers to questions. And you can do this through the SEO, which is really great to know that your prime agent website does SEO for you all by itself, which is wonderful. You don't have to worry about going into the back end and typing in here and I didn't do this kind of technical thingamabob that I have no idea what it is. Use your Prime Magic website to its advantage by typing in whatever it is you want to say on the pages on your Prime Agent website. It will take that and turn it into the SEO that is going to get you ranked the highest it possibly can. But of course, this takes you developing out your Prime Agent website. What else do you want to say on your website aside from your listings, your open houses, your just sold? What other information can you provide to clients, potential clients, to keep them coming back for more? Your website is really about a chance to show off exactly who you are and what you're all about and connect with clients on your home turf. You want your customers to, to come to you for information, for helpful content, to, uh, for referrals. Your conversion rate is the number of visitors your site converts into leads through form submission, which your Prime Magic website has a form if you so choose to uh, pay for the Prime Magic website package there, which I highly recommend doing so you can capture those leads. And thinking about user experience when you're putting your site together means you can help visitors find what's right for them, help them decide yours is the brand they want to, to work with or help keep them in touch for example, by signing up for the newsletter that comes with your Prime Agent website. Hmm? Yeah. So check on your site's analytics and note how people are behaving on your site. Where do they click? What pages they spend the most time on? And you can do that by using Google Analytics. Make sure you jump over to my webinar on Google Analytics and we'll get all that straightened out. So your overall user experience also probably needs improvement if you see, well, you know what? I might retract that because a high bounce rate, especially in the real estate industry, I don't believe is real. Some people come to a website because they clicked on a link to a property and they just want to see that one property. The bounce rate would mean that they just looked at that one property and left, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because they looked at that one property and filled out a form on the property page to get more information. I don't think bounce rate is bad in that sense, although the industry standard said those, that bounce rate is a high bounce rate is not good to have. I don't know if I believe that. I think I might be one of the only people who uh, thinks that having a high bounce rate is not necessarily a bad thing, especially if an action is being taken on the page that they left from. Okay, I'm giving you the information, so do with that uh, what you will. But also, having a great website helps you organically turn up higher in search results. And you can also leapfrog to the top of a page of results by using paid search ads 
you know, set of keywords that, that are relevant to your brand. And you can pay for each click on your ad, which is why these ads are also known as pay per click, you know, PPC. And getting an ad into that highly visible area involves winning an automated auction that takes into account the price per click you bid on a given keyword, as well as the quality uh, determined by the SEO principles on your site. So you can do paid search ads uh, on your website there as well. But having a great social media presence is a prerequisite for sponsored social posts. So if you're already writing brilliant content that shows off what your brand is all about, paying to promote posts can get those posts into the news feeds of people who aren't following you just yet. Um, you can target your audience on different networks. Uh, Facebook, you can do interested interests they've um, marked on their, their Facebook or Twitter has user networks, LinkedIn, you know, based on job description. But sponsoring a, a social post um, is is probably one of the easiest ways to get yourself out there as far as advertising goes, because it's the when you're in Facebook, it says boost post. Yeah, boost the post, click on that, you're good to go. Now, also, in the process of building your empire here, winning new clients is, is as important as nurturing relationships with clients you already have. You know, stay in touch with your loyal followers with emails that go beyond the announcement of additional services that you might offer. Build connections with those newsletters. Your prime agent website uh, package, paid package there gives you a newsletter. So increase your brand awareness and drive traffic uh, by utilizing this newsletter. Um, you even can have the... Um, in that paid package, you have campaigns and you can stay on the client's radar with uh, seasonal emails. A campaign package there will have an automatic email going out every holiday. So it's a great um, feature as part of the, the paid package as well. Um, you can also do uh, um, those uh, announcements from the, the free Prime Agent Broadcasts, which has the open house or just listed. Um, they even have a template that you can customize with your own information as well, which is also part of the free broadcast that you have. So um, using the free and paid features of your Prime Agent website, um, your account package there also puts all this together. You can collect email subscribers by having a form on your paid Prime Agent website. They can fill out that form and receive something of course you know everybody wants something you want more information well, you got to give me something so if you've got a white paper perhaps promise them a white paper uh, by filling out for information you can get those leads directly deposited into your prime agent crm as well so don't forget that less is more you know figure out a clear objective for every email that you send and also test test a lot what types of subject lines or word results in, in in you know get you the highest number of opens in your emails and you can see all of that inside of your prime agent account you've got analytics for every email that you send which is fantastic so i highly recommend uh, getting into looking into that paid prime agent package there so that way you can see uh, all of the wonderful things that you can do with the leads that you capture and how far your website is actually reaching with all these clickable features that you've got inside of your paid prime agent package now also don't forget about the native advertising which is a term for a type of advertisement that looks and sounds exactly like the content that, that surrounds it much advertising on social media counts as native, especially if the style and tone of the ad is similar to the content surrounding it. You know, sponsored content is another uh, important native stream, and indeed, many online publishers have come to rely on it as an important revenue stream. So, for small businesses like those of us that are solo agents here in the real estate industry, large scale publisher partnerships probably aren't realistic there. But if you've got something useful and interesting to say about a particular issue related to your business, you could explore having an appropriate third party site with a similar target market to you publish your blog articles or any video content you make as advertorial, which is definitely something that you could be looking into, especially if you decide to use the blog feature. That's part of your prime agent website as well. And the blog feature is is built in. Uh, it comes with the paid prime agent account package there. You can certainly uh, start your blog up there because you never know who there, again, someone that might want to partner with you, uh, depending upon the blog post that you are writing. So bearing in mind what we said about the importance of keeping things simple and light touch when you're starting out, you know, don't be afraid to use a combination of marketing techniques and ideas. It's useful to, to think of your marketing activity as an ecosystem when all of your tactics, whether they're online or offline, when they work together, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. 
you know, you might not always get it right every single time, but you can keep a keen eye on the performance of your activity. And it's possible to, to minimize your risk since you can more or less switch your tactics on and off at will. And while it's obviously important to focus your attention on what's working as you start to gain confidence in digital marketing, your strategy starts to pay dividends. But, you know, you've also got to let yourself have some fun and experiment with some different tactics as well. So I know there's a lot of information to digest here about digital marketing, but if you have any questions about anything that we've talked about here today, that is my email, that is my phone number please don't hesitate to reach out. We can definitely talk more about digital marketing, uh, perhaps even creating a digital marketing strategy for yourself going into the new year. So once again, that is my email. That is my phone number. If you have any questions, feel free. Always happy to help. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you learned a little bit more about digital marketing for real estate professionals. Until next time.